In this central Florida town near Orlando, the number of homeless students has skyrocketed more than 20-fold. School buses drop off children near their motel where they live with their family. This is my area right here. Zach Montgomery is one of them. I'm not really embarrassed, just it's such a small room, can't really do anything except for just sit. He and his family live in this motel along the side of Interstate 27. Show you just about everything I got. Dirty laundry is packed high, dishes are cleaned in the bathroom sink, their meal is cooked in a sizzling skillet a few feet from the bathroom. It's hard for Zach to concentrate on schoolwork here. Such close quarters take some getting used to. Not being able to do our laundry on a regular basis, um, the, the cooking situation, waiting in the line for showers, pushing somebody out of the mirror so while they're doing their hair so I can shave. Um, yeah, just <laughs> there's a lot of things, but you work around it. This quiet, rural town of Rolling Hills in Lake County was hit especially hard by the economic recession. For sale signs overshadow abandoned restaurants, jobs and housing are scarce here in Claremont. Education experts say that has contributed to the high rates of children who are homeless in states with both a struggling economy and a serious housing crisis such as Florida. We've seen since the 2006-2007 school year a 38 percent increase in the number of children that public schools are identifying and serving as, as homeless. So really we're looking at um, unprecedented growth and severity of homelessness among children and youth in our country right now. Local high school teacher Sherry Hevner says such living conditions can disrupt a child's education. They come into a classroom and they're lethargic, then I know that they didn't sleep that night. You know that something's going on. Uh, if they're hungry, it's going to show in the way they respond to me in class as well as on their tests. So Hevner's students started a pantry. Each homeless student at the school is given a backpack filled with donated shampoo bottles and soaps, toothbrushes and toothpaste. There's also canned food, so the student won't have to worry about where their next meal will come from. And a makeshift store has racks of clothes and shoes for the students. The program works as a sort of secret backpack society. If you identify them as homeless, then you have now separated them from the rest of the group. And because of that, they become vulnerable. So confidentiality plays probably the biggest key in meeting the needs of a high schooler. Zach was supposed to pick up his bag today, but he didn't show up to school. I just worry about my family more, I guess, about all the situation, I guess. To pass the time at night, he and his father head to the motel's lobby to work on an unfinished puzzle. It's just about the only quiet time they can have together. Well, that's all that over here. Suzette LaBoy, Associated Press, Claremont, Florida.